Yeah. This is Police and Poetry. Welcome back, viewers and subscribers. You know, today I'm not really in a good mood still, you know what I mean? Because sometimes when you hear when you hear certain stories about some members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force and it, it, you know it reminds me of my story and um, how I was treated and um, how bad I felt at times and how low I felt at times sometimes you don't even have a colleague to talk to not, you don't have nobody to talk to you know what I mean? Sometimes you just feel stressed out in a day when you're a police officer because the job demands a, a whole lot, both mentally and physically at times. And I had it, I, I have been through a whole lot of pressure. And I've been at, I've been to places where I have to wonder what next. I mean, just want to lift up and leave the job. You have a whole lot of days like that. When the stress is so much and not so much the work in you know, about how the organization treats you on a daily basis you know what i mean and sometimes when you see your salary and you see your expenses you have to wonder what you know what am i working for so you know what i mean so it stresses you out sometimes and you know i've had my share of ups and downs in the Jamaica Constabulary Force and I was treated I was treated pretty unfair. And I know what I know what I know what I went through as a policeman. All I can say thank God some of those days are gone but from time to time you reflect and you wonder what what was I doing in an organization like that with these kind of leaders and these kind of people. But, the Jamaica Constable Force is a, a prestige organization. But I can't say that about some of its members, especially the leaders. I was talking to a police recently, yesterday. And when I listened to his story, I felt so bad, you know, to know that at in this time, modern time, police officers are still treated in such a fashion. You see what the leadership of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, the Commissioner of Police, I don't know if he get his directives from the Minister of National Security, must come from the Prime Minister. You see, what they are running now is a kind of draconian style of thing. It's a dictatorship between the Prime Minister and the Minister of National Security and the Commissioner of Police. Police are up being police are operating under a dictatorship, and this is the reason why I said that. I I I I, I am saying this. All right, I explained how stressful the job is, or the job was for me. Sometimes I still feel stressed thinking about the job. And this this particular police officer that I spoke that I have spoken to, and many more. But his story does drive the, 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 the hammer right on the head of the nail. You know what I mean? This man has been shot twice during his tour of duty. Involving about two service vehicle accidents got injured and this man is, was still working even though he was feeling pain. He is one of the kind of police then who never knew what to do in terms of benefits for his injury so he was not receiving anything. But he, he was still on the course. You know what I mean? Trying to do his job as best as he could. Until it reached a level where he, he said to me, Blakey, no more. I'm done. So he decided to migrate. Because he has children now and he needs to find a better life for him and his family. So he decides, oh, listen, I need to leave. So he sent in a, re a letter of resignation. And after sending the letter of resignation, and waiting on the letter of resignation, waiting on the approval for him to resign, because people have to 
approve your resignation. I, I, I never knew nothing go like that. A man wants to leave a job and you can't leave without permission. Those are the things, that is, that is why I'm saying the Jamaica Constable Force is a dictatorship thing. We are, it is run by dictators. You know what I mean? Our, our leaders are puppet on a string being manipulated by the dictator, which is the Prime Minister or his subordinate, Minister of National Security. Now, a policeman who served 15 years, got shot twice, got injured about four times, have had enough of this man tender his resignation. And before the man was given permission to resign, the man was dismissed. The man was dismissed. No pension, no back payment, nothing. Dismiss zero. Zinc. Nothing in our pocket. Not even pension to get when they reach the age. And that was all made possible because of this new rule that the draconian leadership of the Jamaica Constable came Constable Force came down with to say that if a policeman has to resign, he has to inform the organization within six months prior to his resignation. I do not see anybody trying to fight this. Well, the powers that be, who's supposed to fight this? Police can't fight it. Because like I said, it's, it's a dictatorship. So what they say are what we have to go by. So it's, it's one thing if you want to leave the organization, prepare to be fired, or just walk away, just abandon. Because resigning don't make sense unless you give them six months in advance. Like I said, you know, the work is very stressful, so a man can't just get up and decide, so I have had enough. And yet the man can't leave the organization. What, what? Mr. Commissioner, is this is this a way of keeping police officers on the street? You can't re you can't recruit enough members that you have to give a man six a man have to give six months a, a warning in advance before he retires. I can't even say it it is unacceptable because I would be that would that, that would wouldn't even matter if I say it is acceptable unacceptable. Because that is being forced down the throats of policemen and women that you have to give six months to retire or less. If you have to leave and you leave, then you are dismissed. We don't know back pay, nothing. That is what is going on in the Jamaica Constabulary Force. The kangaroo system, a dictatorship system. And it hurts, it hurts me down deep, deep down inside to see a man serve the organization for so many years gotten so much so many injuries on the job and yet he has had enough and can't leave the organization no good salary countless injuries stressed out to the max or he probably even think about killing himself and yet the man won't leave and is prevented from being living but then they fire him instead so i am saying this in a police you guys have to see the organization for what it is and what the leadership is and you can see where the organization is coming because if it has reached a stage where a man cannot resign freely without being fired then i think it is time for all of us to walk away leave this job to whosoever is running the thing let them get them friends to do the job because what else can we do if we can't even resign we can't even retire in peace or resign in peace you see for the years, from over the years, from, from years and years now, they, are, they have been coming with rules and regulations without even, without even consulting with the police federation. And the police federation can't even do nothing about it because guess what? The police federation is governed by the same body who make all these rules and answers to the same body. We don't have an independent body to stand up and say that is wrong. You can't do that. This is unlawful. Nobody can. Nobody now can say that. It has, re it has reached a stage in Jamaica where a policeman, a serving member of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, a citizen of Jamaica, because even though you're a police officer, you're also a citizen of Jamaica. But yet, 
the constitutional laws laws that that covers citizens does not does not go for you as a policeman you are a suspect if you are a suspect in, a, in an offense the judge of rule states that a man has, is, is supposed to be is supposed to be cautioned and and a man have the right to remain silent but not a police officer we can't remain silent because they say oh it's a part of your job description that you have to give a statement on your own self no I don't know about you guys you know but they are good they will have to charge me for failure to to what they, what they might say what they call it again failure to cooperate with their investigation because if I am a suspect I have the right to remain silent the constitution the constitutional law said that because I am a citizen of Jamaica even though I'm a police officer but that's for another time you see the police force does not have a representation well the kind of representation that it needs secondly this is what I want to talk about since I am on the topic so there is nothing that we can do about this anymore as police officer we, what, what can we do we don't have a representative body to say no this is wrong and fight this all bring it even to court if possible no we can't so we have to swallow whatever pill is passed down to the commissioner to us can't resign in peace you, you are fired instead so it's time for you uh, you, you police officers now to start looking out for yourselves and every six months, make sure you write a resignation. Always write a resignation on duty, but, uh, you know, but, but then again, you have a honey team that are the next problem. <laughs> so no matter what you take, why it tight. So if you want to leave the job, you know, so you'll get fired. So you don't bother even, don't even bother to tender a resignation. Just walk away, leave the job. Because what else can we do? Walk away, leave the job. That's the only thing we can do. The worthless job, worthless paying job. The job that is being led by politicians and criminals. We have to just walk away, leave it because guess what? It's not for us. Because we cannot get any right as policemen in Jamaica. The odds, is, the odds are always against policemen. Secondly, police. This is what I want you guys to know. If you are injured in a line of duty, I want you to listen carefully to me. If you are injured in a line of duty and you, your injury was of negligence, that mean, meaning you were accidentally injured by another police officer or there was an accident, motor vehicle accident, whatever, you were injured in a line of duty especially if you were injured by another police officer first thing you need to do is get an attorney as a policeman you all need to have an attorney you can sue the attorney general for your injuries because it is negligence if another policeman shot you by accident it is negligence learn that get your attorney sue the attorney general for your injuries you will get paid all right, they will tell you that you cannot sue the Attorney General unless you seek permission from the Commissioner of Police. Nonsense. Nonsense, police. Nonsense. They are, only, they are only doing that to scare you off. You have the right to sue for your injuries without, con without confirming anything with the Commissioner of Police. That is what I am telling you. I have done it and I won my case. I never ask commissioner for any police. I never need to. So you don't need to ask the commissioner for permission to sue the attorney general. If you're injured in the line of duty by another policeman, take it from me today. And if you have problems, any of you police officers who have been shot by another member, injured by another member, once it's not past six years, you can still sue the attorney general. Remember that. You can still sue the Attorney General. Another thing, if you're shot and injured in a line of duty, 
anywhere in your torso or anywhere where where, where and you you were not issued with a bulletproof vest you can also sue the attorney general because they were supposed to provide a bulletproof vest to protect your life and if they did not provide you with a bulletproof vest on record they did not provide you with a bulletproof vest you can sue because they were supposed to give you the proper gears to protect your life use your wife to sue them if you have to because your wife can do it you don't have to sue the attorney general your wife can if you're married your wife can your mother can you can but learn this you do not need permission from anybody to sue the attorney general if you are so injured remember this police officers remember that it is time for you to start looking out for yourselves and think about your welfare first you know your welfare first if you get shot and injured in the line of duty everybody turn them back on you nobody now remember you out of sight out of mind i will say this again you know out of sight out of mind nobody no business with you sometimes better you, you die because the suffering that you will go through when you get shot at your home then you will see what kind of organization you are you are serving so until that happens to you probably you will never know but i am telling you now another thing that i want you as police officers to know there was a police officer quote unquote god you know god rest may, may so rest in peace walter grant he used to sell police insurance policies Walter Grant's policies was the worst policies that police could ever buy. Because listen, police officers, and you need to learn this. Any policy that you're going to get as a policeman, it must not just be a life insurance policy. Because remember, life insurance policy is only when you're dead. Then bury you, one little money for bury you. There's not much to it. One little, one little policy. What you need to do as policemen, because remember, our jobs, our type of job that we, do, we are at, we are, high, we, we are considered high risk. So this is what you need to do. You are to, number one, ensure that your policy, whatever policy that you have, it must cover life in case you die. It must cover accident. Right? And sickness. So listen now. This is why you need the accident. And not just life. For example, I got shot. What did my insurance policy did for me? I had insurance policy. Same insurance policy that I am telling you not to get. The one with those riders. About $500 per rider. They don't work. You will not get anything when you get, when you get shot. In the line of duty. Because this is what is going to happen. When you get shot in the line of duty. The, the government is going to take care of all your hospital bills and pay all your bills. Listen? Unless you sue, then your lawyer take over the bills. So the government is going to pay all your bills. So when you go to that insurance that insurance company, say LOJ, and you, you, you ask them that, listen, I was shot and injured and, you know, I need some compensation. Remember, all the riders... And all the, that policy that that, that 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 you have, that which I had, all they are good the riders are going to do is just cover all the riders like five hundred dollars just cover for the injury. But you need to produce all the receipts in order to get a cent from the insurance company. Where are you going to get receipt from? The government pay all your pay all your hospital bills. Therefore, you have no receipts no bills to furnish to the insurance company so you are going to get nothing learn that police officers you are not going to get a thing no this is the reason why i want you to get policies that cover both accident and death this is because if you are out on the street not on duty and you have an accident you have a broken arm or anything happen to you while you're not on duty the insurance policy that you have with the accident will cover you it will take care of your medical bills and it will it will also pay you a certain sum of money depending on your injuries so police officers please i am begging you be careful of the in, the, the, the insurance policies that you have 
if you still have that policy that Walter Grant was selling to police officers. With this little rider thing on it, life insurance, universal life with the life, and then you have the little riders. It is crap. Change it over. The policy that, that, that McAllister had, McAllister is no more, but that policy is, is a far better policy than the one Walter Grant was selling police officers for far more money. McAllister is now changed to Orion. I don't know if they still exist, but they were changed to Orion. You need to get a policy that covers you for death and also for accidents. If you don't know, please change the policy that you have now. If you, have, if you are listening, change the policy that you have now. Change that policy. Because you will not get anything from it. Make sure your policy is accident and death. That's what you need to have. So, that is the only way that you will be covered. When I was injured, I immediately... After finding out all this information, I immediately cancelled that policy. I never bought another insurance policy again because it did not cover me. The policy that Walter Grant was selling. So, we need to be abreast police of our welfare. We need to look out for ourselves. We need to look out for ourselves because at the end of the day, it's just you and your families probably you're not you, you, you probably you don't even see a friend because when you get shot and you're at home the, probably the first week you see a two one and two man come around but the third and fourth week and the next two months and three months you're not going to see anybody but your family when i was shot and injured this is the disgrace when i was shot and injured a civilian businessman who knew me. This man from San Marino, Mr. Robert White. God bless his God bless that man. If it wasn't for that man, I would have never reached therapy or the hospital sometimes. That man sent his private motor vehicle to assist me when the police force failed me. That man had to be calling the police station to ask the superintendent. Why isn't, why isn't anybody gone to pick up the, the Detective Carper Blake to take him to the hospital or take him to get his wounds dressed? When I, when I couldn't get Mr. White to help me, I had to call a, my, a friend of mine, a, a, a civilian friend of mine, to take me to get my wounds dressed. Because the force abandoned me a hundred percent. You see them for the first week and the second week, but after that, you will be on your own. You will be on your own. I, I went to, 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 to my doctor visit with nobody to even protect my life with me in case I was attacked by gunmen. Lucky my friend car was tinted. So these are the things that will happen to you. It happened to me so it can't happen to you. They will leave you there and your wound is there to be dressed and nobody is coming for you to carry you. You will even call the police station and say, listen, me, today is my appointment. I need to get my wounds dressed. And they say, oh, well, man, and nobody comes. Can that happen to me? It can happen to you. So sometimes our best friends are not police, you know, are civilians. And you see your family out there, they will have to pitch in. Because when you're a policeman and you're injured in the line of duty and you're at home and you need to go to get your wounds dressed, you're supposed to be escorted by a police team. But let me tell you something, it's going to happen for the first or second week, if it happens so long. But after that, you're on your own. You will not see them again, because nobody will remember about you anymore. I am telling you that. So, police officers, please, you know me, I beg you, you know, look out for our own welfare, because nobody else is going to look, it up, look, look out for it for you. This policeman that, 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 that does just made me do made me do this video today i feel it so bad for the man to know that a man served his country for so many years and got injured in line of duty and the man is so tired and stressed out the man was on the verge of committing suicide and the man left the job resigned handing his resignation and he was dismissed because he did not 
give the six months notice. Kangaroo leadership, dictatorship, is what they say goes. We have no other choice and we have no representation. Sometimes when we see what police, police are going through, we feel like, ball. Because you know what? I have, I have felt their pain. I have been through it. My story is not even told yet. Soon you will find out. I'm not ready to tell people yet. Soon you will find, find out the atrocities that happened to me. When I was shot and injured it twice and was at my house. You will know how bad I was treated by the organization that I serve. Because they don't care about nobody else but themselves and their friends in high places. Trust me. Police officers, please, me, I beg on you again. Take care of the welfare. Yourself comes first, brother. They, if you can't come to work, if you die today, they will replace you. Somebody else will do your job tomorrow. Remember that. Like an officer said to me two days ago, and the same officer who told this corporal also told me the same thing too. I will destroy you all because I was looking out for my own welfare and not doing his bidding. He told me I would destroy you. He told the other corporal almost the same thing too. So at the end of the day, they don't care about you. All they care about is their money friends, you know. And they will put their money friends over you as a member any day. Any day. Let me tell you that. Including your own colleagues, them too. Let me tell you that. I leave the job and sometimes you go to the police station and you want something for done and everybody will walk past you like you, you don't even exist. You wasn't a police officer here. They don't know you. You're a stranger. They deal with civilians better than you will leave the job. But that discussion is for another topic. It's up for another time. And you will get that discussion. So thanks for watching and thanks for listening as always. You know, Police, take care of your welfares. Get proper insurance policies. Thank you.